Have you ever thought about what will be the machines or the equipments builders needed to construct all these beautiful constructions and bridges? All these big, long, heavy bridges have to be too strong for they are bearing all the transportation and communication ways. Do you want to know more about this construction? Keep watching this video. Welcome to Construction Technique. In this video, we are going to talk about the incredible constructions equipment machines that you will need to know for world amazing bridge constructions. But before we make it to the video, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The technological aspects of construction influence the modern bridge industry from the very first steps of design. Entire families of bridges such as the launched bridges, the span-by-span -span bridges, and the balanced cantilever bridges take their name from the construction method. The full-span method so frequently applied in high-speed railway projects is another example. The bridge industry is moving towards mechanized construction because this saves labor, shortens project duration, and improves quality. This trend is evident in many countries and involves most construction methods. Mechanized bridge construction is based on the use of specialized erection equipment. Beam launchers are used to erect precast beams. Self-launching gantries and lifting frames are used to erect precast segmental bridges. Moving scaffolding systems and form travelers are used for in-place casting of spans and segments of pre-stressed concrete bridges. Forming carriages are used for segmental casting of the concrete slab of composite bridges. Portal carriers with underbridge and span launchers fed by tire trolleys are used for transportation and placement of precast spans. Lifting platforms are used to hoist macro segments for suspension bridges. Alternate configurations of machines are also available for most construction methods. New generation bridge construction equipment is complex and delicate. It handles heavy loads on long spans under the same constraints that the obstruction to the overpass exerts onto the bridge. Safety of operations and quality of the final product depend on complex interactions between human decisions, structural, mechanical, and electrohydraulic components, control systems, and the bridge being erected. In spite of their complexity, these machines must be as light as possible. Weight governs the initial investment, the cost of shipping and site assembly, the erection stresses, and sometimes even the cost of the bridge. Weight limitation dictates the use of high-grade steels and the design for high stress levels in different load and support conditions, which makes these machines potentially prone to instability. Bridge erection equipment is assembled and decommissioned many times in different conditions and by different crews. It is modified, reconditioned, and adapted to new work conditions. Connections and field splices are subjected to hundreds of load reversals. The nature of loading is often highly dynamic, the equipment may be exposed to strong wind, and the full design load is reached multiple times and sometimes exceeded. Impacts are not infrequent, vibrations may be insignificant, and most machines are actually quite lively because of their high structural efficiency. Movement adds the very important complication of variable geometry. Loads and support reactions are applied eccentrically. The support sections are often devoid of diaphragms, and most machines have flexible support systems. Indeed, such design conditions are almost inconceivable in permanent structures subjected to such loads. The level of sophistication of new generation machines requires adequate technical culture in all parties involved in mechanized bridge construction. Long subcontracting chains may lead to loss of communication, the problems not dealt with during planning and design must be solved on the site, the risks of wrong operations are not always evident in such complex and sophisticated machines, and human error is the prime cause of accidents. Bridge construction equipment is often purchased by procurement personnel that have just a vague idea on what they are buying and tend to recommend decisions to the management based on the only aspect that they can compare, the cost. The final cost for the contractor is typically higher than the figure written at the end of the offer and the overall value of two apparently similar machines may also be pretty different. Inspections may clarify if the machine is in good conditions or is a freshly repainted bunch of rust. However, other aspects influence the value of a machine. Labor and crane demand of site assembly, for example, may be a bitter surprise if hundreds of field splices are designed with friction bolts and lap plates instead of through pins or stressed bars. 1. Mechanized bridge construction is based on the use of special equipment. With extensive illustrations and case studies, this course explores configurations, operations, loads, kinematics, performance, productivity, structure equipment interactions, and industry trends for every family of special equipment. The course also explores the design of piers, abutments, and superstructures for safe and efficient use of special equipment, and delivers a unique wealth of knowledge. 2. Movable Scaffolding System The course explores the use of MSS for span-by-span -span and balanced cantilever in-place casting of pre-stressed concrete bridges. 
You will learn under which circumstances is span-by-span -span casting with MSS, a competitive alternative to incremental launching and precast segmental construction, will compare the use of telescopic MSS for macro-segmental balanced cantilever bridges with in-place casting with form travelers, and will explore bridge design and detailing for effective use of MSS. 3. Precast Segmental Bridges the course provides exhaustive coverage of span-by-span -span and balanced cantilever construction of precast segmental bridges. With extensive illustrations and case studies, the course explores the geometric design of precast segmental bridges, the production of standardized, atypical segments, combined with geometry control with typical segments and short-line molds, the geometry control of short and long-line casting, and site assembly of precast segmental spans on shoring towers, by strand jacking from barges, and with self-launching gantries and lifting frames. 4. Launched Bridges The course explores geometric launchability criteria, launch bearings and guides for steel and pre-stressed concrete bridges, thrust systems, and how to control the deck movements during uphill and downhill launching. Richly illustrated with dozens of photographs and case studies, the course is constantly top-rated for material and presentation. 5. Suspension Bridges Consist of towers secured by cables that suspend the central structural span or deck. The tower foundations may be constructed using caisson or cofferdam techniques, while the cable anchorages can be secured through anchorage tunnels to suitable ground on either end. 6. Suspension Bridges The anchorage foundations are usually constructed deep into a hillside on both banks. The towers are typically constructed using steel or in situ concrete built on large concrete bases. Cable housings generally take the form of massive concrete blocks either positioned in water at either bank or cast deep into the bank itself. Multi-strands of high tensile wire are used to build up the suspension cables, which are then carried between anchorage points by means of a grooved wheel. The deck may be erected either by lifting sections from pontoons below or by cantilevering sections out from each end. The modern era of bridge building began with the development of the Bessemer process for converting cast iron into steel. It became possible to design framed structures with greater ease and flexibility. Single-piece rolled steel beams can support spans of 50 to 100 feet, depending on their load. Larger built-up beams are made for longer spans. A steel box beam bridge with an 850-foot span crosses the Rhine at Cologne. The cable stayed bridge is the most modern type, coming into prominence during the 1950s. The longest is the Rusky Bridge, Vladivostok, Russia, which has a main span of 3,622 feet. The Sutong Bridge, Zhuzhou Nangtong, Jigansu, China, with a main span of 3,570 feet. And the Stonecutters Bridge, Hong Kong, with a main span of 3,340 feet are other long cable stayed bridges. The longest cable stayed bridge in the United States is the Arthur Ravenel Jr. Bridge in Charleston, South Carolina, which has a span of 1,546 feet. The suspension bridge is used for the longest spans. The earliest suspension bridges built in America were those constructed by the American builder James Finley. Movable bridges are generally constructed over waterways where it is impossible or prohibitive to build a fixed bridge high enough for water traffic to pass under it. The most common types of movable bridges are the lifting, bascule, and swing bridges. The lifting bridge, or lift bridge, consists of a rigid frame carrying the road and resting abutments over each of which rises a steel frame tower. A new kind of bridge construction opens and unfolds like an umbrella, creators say. Structural engineers at the TU Wien, or Vienna University of Technology, have built a prototype bridge mechanism with a central umbrella handle and two opposite spokes controlling by a slider. The umbrella method is a completely new way to construct a static final bridge. This TU Wien team first worked on the idea in 2006, and it's been experimenting and fine-tuning since then. Instead of traditional kinds of bridge building, i.e., putting up long-term scaffolding as rebar is laid and concrete is filled into structures, this mechanism is built like a closed umbrella and then unfolded into its final position. From there, its hollow girders are filled with concrete and the rest of the structural elements are completed. Some bridges are constructed by building the vertical supports and then slowly scooting an almost completed deck across the top. In that case, the surface is made of just one piece that can be fully assembled off to the side or assembled in situ as portions pass through a construction zone before being scooted. Well, that was way too long to be brief, but here in this video we got to know both the modern and previous techniques to construct a bridge and of the techniques follows the same patterns of concrete and strong bridges unless the modern techniques that will save more time and money leniently. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. More interesting videos are coming, and if you don't want to miss any of our videos, then smash the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will always be updated.